welcome to today's uh, segment we are going to look at animal nutrition which basically will also help us in determining our health status because under this topic you are going also to see how we can live healthy lives okay so if this is your first time to watch this channel please click the subscribe button like and share okay so and um animal nutrition we want to look at what is a balanced diet what are the components which make up a balanced diet we also want to see some of the factors that affect the proportions um, that different individuals are going to consume of the balanced diet for healthy purposes and we are also going to look at some of the functions of some of the nutrients in a balanced diet so before we even start by looking at what a balanced diet is what is diet what have you taken or what have you eaten this morning this afternoon and what are you planning to eat in the evening so basically when you look at the food that you eat that is basically your diet your diet is composed of the food the different foods the solid foods the liquid foods that you consume that makes up your diet and in most cases about 80 to 90 percent you are what you eat okay why do we eat in the first place remember we said animals and we belong to the class of animals we are heterotrophs and we cannot make our own food therefore we depend on plants as well as other animals for our food and the reason why we need this food is because food contains very important nutrients that we need for our growth we also need the food for us to gain energy to be energetic so that we can go about doing our daily work we also need energy just to sustain to keep us alive because you must know that even when you are relaxing on your bed sleeping you are also using energy just to keep yourself alive breathing heartbeat a gaseous exchange brain function all those they require energy okay we need food so that we can make new cells once the ones we have are damaged so they need to be repaired okay so new cells damaged cells worn out tissues they need to be repaired and this is done by the nutrients which are contained in the food that we eat okay so basically that is what we need and so which are some of these nutrients that are essential for a person's growth so well-being as well as health okay some of the nutrients that we need there are basically about seven nutrients that we need in a person's diet one needs carbohydrates carbohydrates these are energy giving foods generally they belong to the starch which are your rice your potatoes your sadza your yams your tof all these are examples of starch carbohydrates carbohydrates they can also be in the form of sugars okay the sugar in the sugar cane the sugar found in fruits the sugar that is used to make sugary products such as the sweet the biscuits they, these are all carbohydrates and they are energy giving we also need have proteins in one's diet the main functions of proteins are generally for growth for the repair of worn out tissues we also need proteins for structural purposes from your the sole of your foot to your hair basically is protein your hair is protein your nails protein the skin protein okay so your muscles proteins 
Those are some of the structures which are being made by the proteins. The proteins, they are also used to make transporting molecules. Remember when you looked at some specialized cells, we looked at hemoglobin as one of the components contained in the red blood cells, which is responsible for transporting oxygen. Okay, so the hem molecule on the hemoglobin is made of protein. And to that, we add iron, a mineral. And that composition gives us the hemoglobin molecule, which is now able to transport oxygen. Okay, the enzymes are made of proteins. We are going to look at enzymes later when we look at digestion. They are all proteins. Okay, so those are some of the functions of the proteins. Your diet needs fats. Fats, this could be, they are generally referred to as lipids. Lipids consist of fats and oils. The fats, these are solids at room temperature and they are normally found in um, animals, whereas oils are liquids at room temperature and they are normally found in plants. Okay, and um, the importance of fats is that they are very good for giving energy. Okay, they give more energy per gram than the carbohydrates. Okay, lipids, they're also used as uh, food reserves. Okay, the fats, they can be converted into um, energy, giving molecules in the event that the system does not have enough carbohydrates. So they are reserves, energy reserves. Uh, the fats, they're also used for insulation. Insulation, this is a process whereby we are minimizing heat loss from your body through your skin. So we have a lot of fats which are deposited just underneath the skin. Okay, have you eaten a chicken piece lately? If you simply remove the skin, you are going to see that there are lots and lots of fatty layers just below the skin. Okay, so those are fats. And their purpose is to minimize heat loss from the organism so that the body can have a constant environment. Okay, fats, they are also used to make structures. Okay, we have structures such, such as the, um, the cell membranes. Basically, they are combinations of these lipids plus some cholesterol. Okay, so basically that is some of the functions of our lipids. They are also used to protect some internal organs from damage, from shock. Okay, the heart, the kidneys, these are some of the delicate organs that need to be cushioned and protected and they are going to be covered under lots and lots of layers of fat. If you di uh, dissect a chicken and you look at the gizzard, you're going to see that the gizzard is going to be covered by layers and layers of fats. Those fats are basically protecting the gizzard and also maintaining the temperatures inside the gizzard so that it can perform its function of breaking down the food that will be in there. So those are some of the organs that needs to be protected. So even inside the human body, we also have such organs which needs to be surrounded by these fats for protection. Okay. Then we also have the vitamins. The vitamins are generally required for good health. Okay. They boost the immune system and shield. Later on, we are going to say that we have different vitamins which perform different functions in the body and their deficiencies will result in um, healthy issues, okay? Then we also have minerals which are needed. Minerals are needed in the formation and the develop, general development of the body. 
they are used to make hard as well as soft tissue okay your bones your teeth are examples of such tissues hard tissue which requires minerals for their formation soft tissue the red blood cells the examples of some soft tissue which also require minerals in their formation okay so we are going to see how some minerals affect one's good health later on we also need roughage in one's diet Fetch. this is basically dietary fiber we talked about this earlier when we lo were looking at the structure of a plant cell we said it consists of a cell wall made of the carbohydrate cellulose and cellulose cannot be digested inside the alimentary canal of humans as a result it's now passed out as fiber or roughage what is the importance it is very important in digestion it assists in digestion it also helps in the bowel movement the removal of the undigested food from the alimentary canal so that it is it forms a very good soft bolus which can easily be passed out okay this is the issue whereby if one does not have enough fiber one is mostly going to suffer from constipation and when the dead remains stuck inside the alimentary canal this will also have some healthy consequences okay so that is our fiber and last but not the least we have water the system needs lots and lots of water remember we said we are basically water the human body about 60 to 75 percent or 80 percent or 85 percent is basically water your blood is water the lymphatic system is water okay so the body is made up of water so it needs water the cytoplasm the blood all these they contain water why so much water water is used as a solvent okay it dissolves some chemicals and we say some chemicals they require that solution for them to okay it's used to transport substances in the body okay and water is a lot of function that it plays it's good for the skin that lovely skin which is well hydrated is because of water that good sharp mind is because of water if you have enough water in your diet okay so basically these are the nutrients which are needed in a in one's diet and so when an individual is able to get all these nutrients in his or her diet and they are taken in their correct proportions then one he is said to have a balanced diet so a balanced diet is basically a diet which contains all the food nutrients in their correct proportions it's a diet that contains all the food nutrients in their correct proportions that is your balanced diet and so these are the components of a balanced diet now when you look at a balanced diet we must also note that um, different individuals are going to require different proportions of these nutrients so what are some of the factors that are going to determine if I'm having a balanced diet or not okay so some of the factors include one your age your gender or your sex that is are you a boy are you a girl okay uh physical activity level of physical activity so normally under physical activity we are looking at um your occupation for instance e.g your occupation the type of job that you do the type of activities that you do it also is influenced by body size 
okay and yes you may have considered all this but are you going to get all the nutrients in the foods that you have collected and you say ah i've no money to collect all the samples of a balanced diet are you going to really have a balanced diet this is also going to be affected by your cooking methods cooking methods they are going to affect whether you are going to really have a balanced diet or not okay and um, let's start by age an individual's age is very important carbohydrate intake which are energy giving foods they are mostly needed by those individuals which are very energetic and as we know the young individuals and those who are still adolescents, they are quite active, playing around, running around. So they are using a lot of energy. So they will need more of these carbohydrates in their diet as compared to older individuals. Because older individuals, they are now less active. Okay. As a result, they don't need all the, uh, a lot of carbohydrates. But this will also depend on physical activity. Those who are doing a lot of physical work will also need a lot of carbohydrates. For instance, people who are doing manual work, they're doing a lot of muscle work. So the muscles, they need enough energy for contraction. So a person who does office work, if he or she eats the same amount of carbohydrates as one who does manual work, then it means the person who is doing uh, office work, which is sedentary work, is going to have too much of the carbohydrates. As a result, that diet already is no longer balanced. I hope you get what I mean. Because manual is more active. As a result, the extra, the food uh, eaten is all going to be converted into energy to do his or her work. Whereas the sedentary individual, the office worker, most of the day, she or he is not doing a lot of physical activity, sitting behind a desk, doing, dealing with computers or that, minimal walking. Okay, as a result, the food, the extra carbohydrates the individual would, would have eaten is not going to be converted into energy. So where does the extra go? <laughs> the extra is going to be converted into fats, and then it is going to be deposited under the skin, layers around the stomach, and you see a person now becoming bigger and bigger. We are going to talk about that, okay, like later on. But I hope you get the point. So it's very important to know the physical activity, the amounts that you eat. It's not a competition when you eat. Know yourself, okay. Then body size also matters in terms of the amount of carbohydrates. Gender also counts. Males generally have a larger body size as a result of when we come to carbohydrate consumption. Under normal circumstances, we then expect the males to have more of the carbohydrates compared to their female counterparts. Because ladies, they generally have a smaller body size. Because remember we said, even when you are at rest, your system needs energy to keep your brain functioning to keep your heart beating to keep yourself just breathing living no physical activity that you are doing you are simply lying down you need almost about seven thousand kilojoules of energy just to do that but when you compare this seven thousand is not uniformly divided males will need more compared to the ladies under normal circumstances, simply because of their differences in body size. Body size and gender. A larger body needs more energy, okay, compared to a smaller body. And that's where the gender also comes in. Okay, and when you come to proteins, you're also going to see that growth normally stops general body growth. It normally stops when one reaches about 20 years. <laughs> yes. When you are 20, 
no more new cells are being produced. Basically, in terms of growth, you have reached your maximum. If you have not tall enough, taller than I am, by 20, oh, well, welcome to the club of the shorties. Okay, growth stops roughly around 20, which means protein intake should be more for individuals which are lower than 20 in age, generally, except some few cases such as lactating mothers, they need more protein because of the developing embryo. There's growth in there. For pregnant mothers, lactating, the one, the one who is being breastfed is getting all the nutrients from the milk. Okay, as a result, more proteins will be required by those individuals. Then if you are sick and invalid, definitely there's a lot of repair work which is going to be done. So such an individual will also need more protein. Okay, so it's very important for us to see how much of the proteins that one gets depending on some of these things. Because after 20, most of the proteins which we now consume are basically for general body repair and body maintenance. But no more growth. And of course, making the new cells, like for example, the red blood cells, they have a definite lifespan. Okay, and once they reach their lifespan, around 120 days, the red blood cells, they die, new ones must be made from your bone marrow. Okay, and that's basically what we are now talking about. So these are some of the factors that will affect whether your diet is balanced or not. So it's not a question, oh, my friend is taking so much protein, I must also take as much maybe your friend is sick basically you or she will need more than you okay so think about that and then we also said cooking methods this is quite an interesting topic which i think we may follow if you like so indicate under the comment section if you want us to do a bit more on this one not related to your syllabus but for general knowledge because the method, the way you use to cook your food will also affect the amount of nutrients that you are going to get from the food that you are going to eat, to cook. Okay, there are so many different cooking methods. I'm not going to get into them in this lesson. So if you are interested, comment section. But the, the reason why you cook food, we cook it so that it can easily be digested. In our body so that we can take the nutrients and utilize them in our system okay but some cooking methods that we use affects the nutrients in the food they affect um, the digestibility of the food that is the metabolism of the food is all going to be affected for, for instance some methods you use the frying methods when you are going to use lots and lots of oil and this oil after you have cooked your vegetables you are not even going to consume the oil is going to be left in the pot somewhere there we have vitamins and these vitamins for them to be used in the body they should be in solution but we have some vitamins which are fat soluble which means the fat soluble vitamins these include vitamin a as well as vitamin D, which means when you are frying your food, especially the vegetables, when you are frying them, the vitamin A is dissolving into the fat, into the oil. Okay? And if at the end of the cooking, you don't consume the oil as well, it means nutrients down the drain. They are not going to get into your body to do the functions of for vitamin A, which I'm going to look at later on. The boiling methods. When you boil your food, there are some vitamins as well, which are water soluble. Okay? So the water soluble vitamins, such as vitamin C, the B complex vitamins, these ones they are going to dissolve and get into the water. So when you don't consume the water, at the end, you leave it in the pot, you throw it away, vitamins, nutrients down the drain. 
you're going to get very little of those nutrients. And at the end of the day, you wonder why your immune system is so low. And yet you're eating so many vegetables. How are you cooking your vegetables? How are you cooking your food? It's very important. Okay. And then, um, how long are you going to cook your food? This also has an effect. Some food becomes overcooked. The problems of overcooking the food is that one, they become less digestible. Okay? Yes, I've eaten it, but it's less digestible, so most of it is simply going to pass out as undigested food material. Very little is going to be converted and absorbed by the system and assimilated. Okay? Yes, you had cooked the food that you cooked. Yes, it had all the nutrients, but you cooked it for too long. And you lost some of the nutrients because the food ended up being undigestible. Yes, you eat it, you chew it, you swallow it, but in the system, we are going to look at digestion later on. The food is not, most of it is not digested. So, loss. Okay? Overcooking, again, especially the overcooking whereby you even burn, over frying the food. Mm, we love those fried things very much, I know. But when you overcook and you burn, you are also destroying the composition of your food. Because cooking, yes, it helps to increase uh, the digestibility of the food. And there are going to be some chemical changes which are going to take place. And to now when you cook to the extent of burning, you are completely changing the chemical composition of your food. You now introduce other components which are no longer good for your body. Okay? That charred bread, that charred piece of meat that you enjoy after when you do braai, you like some pieces which are burnt. It's unfortunately uh, wrong. Because that burnt part, it no longer contains the composition of the actual meat. There are now some compounds, most of them are carcinogenic, that is their cancer causing. And we are consuming all this. I had cooked very well. I had roasted my meat very well. Mm. The way of it. Some of us, we like roasting and we use overheated oil. When you heat oil to the point that it begins to smell, that is no longer oil. Okay. So, at the end of the day, what you are giving us to consume is no longer the good oil that should be beneficial to your system. We should do the functions of the lipids. It now contains, again, dangerous chemicals, some aldehydes, which are cancer-causing, which causes other health issues. So, how do you like to cook your food? Mm -hmm. Think about that. I want my meat to be over, done, over. It's overcooked. Think about it. Okay, so these are some of the factors that will affect how much of the nutrients in your balanced, balanced in cuts? how much of the nutrients in your balanced diet are really present? It also depends on your cooking methods. So for today's lesson, let's just summarize. So for good health, for good health, we recommend that we try to follow the food Pyramid. Oh, yes, there's a food pyramid. <laughs> food pyramid. Okay, the base. Remember, a pyramid is just like those pyramids of Egypt, the castle pyramids. Okay, this is basically a pyramid. We looked at pyramids when we were looking at uh, ecosystems, didn't we? Okay. So, the base should have exercises. Physical activity is very important. Physical activity. So uh, here you have your exercises. You have your weight control. And we also need water. We need lots and lots of water. Please. 
Okay. If you are now my age, you need about two liters of water per day. Yes. And if you are male, <laughs> you need about two and a half or slightly more of water per day. Okay. And if you are also doing physical, more physical activity, you need even more water. It's another interesting topic. If you want us to get into this topic, we can get into it. Because if the body does not get enough water, even before you get to the dehydrated stage, there is a point whereby mental function is affected. Becoming dizzy, you are going to have headaches simply because you don't have enough water. Okay, your kidney function is also going to be affected. You end up having kidney problems, gallstones and stuff, simply because you're not drinking enough water. So let's think about that. So the system needs water. The more active you are, even when you're exercising, take your water bottle with you. Okay, before you eat, drink some water, then you eat. Okay, don't drink water soon after eating. That is also a bad habit. Because the soon, soon after eating, the environment inside the stomach, the temperatures are conducive for enzyme activity to break down the food, digesting the food. But when you drink the water, you are now going to lower the temperatures and you are going to affect the rates of digestion of the food. And some of the fats will even begin to, uh, to coagulate. You think about that. Okay, so we recommend you take water before you eat. Then after eating, if you want some water, drink hot water. Don't drink cold water. Okay. Then the next we need, the next level we need whole grains. Whole grains. Such as your rice, whole grains. It's not super refined. That is also another thing that uh, we didn't mention on your diet. Super refined foods, they would have lost most of their nutrients. So if these nutrients are not replaced during the processing, then your diet will have lower fat. So it's very important for you to look at the nutritional tables on packaged foods. Okay, so that you really see if it contains the nutrients that you really need. Okay, so the whole grains, they are very important because they contain the carbohydrates and they also contain the fiber. Okay, and just underneath the skins of these whole grains, there are lots and lots of minerals. Okay, that's why we need whole grains, not super, super refined. The potatoes, when you boil them, is before peeling. Because just underneath the skin of the potatoes, we have a very good supply of the B complex vitamins. But if you peel first, normally we don't peel so close to the skin. It means we lose those nutrients. Okay, so it's very important. So that's your whole grains. And then after the whole grains, we need lots and lots of fruits and vegetables. We need lots and lots of fruits and vegetables. These are rich in your vitamins and your minerals, especially the leafy, greeny vegetables. They are very, very good for your diet. And again, from this category, besides the vitamins, the minerals, you also get your fiber okay and then from there you can now the quantity your milk and daily products you follow under there the daily products your ice creams your yogurts okay and then i think you can see that the quantities they're getting much and much smaller isn't it because the size will determine the quantities, how much of each group you should get. So, less milk, dairy products, less meat. 
UK white meat here under white meat this falls um, fish it's white chicken is white okay your pork and fall also fall under here your pork that's where they fall not too much remember what we said about your age and about your conditions okay and at the top there we now have your fats your oils and your red meat which means one's diet should not have lots of red meat for healthy purposes if you are interested we can take this up again in another discussion so indicate that in the comment section so basically this is our food pyramid lots of exercise water then followed by whole grains fruits and vegetables milk dairy products white meat which is fish chicken the pork and the least the fats the oils the red meat they should be the least as well as the sugary foods the sugary foods the sugary foods this includes your biscuits the sweets which most people like to use as snacks in between meals we eat a lot of this this is basically junk food okay and it's not good for our health and please note the preservatives also found in food there are also some of the other issues which affect our health okay so this is our food pyramid and remember we said the quantities eaten which are going to be affected by one's age one's gender one's levels of physical activity and this physical activity in most cases for us adults is not going to be dependent on the type of job that you are doing are you a manual worker so you need more of the carbohydrates definitely you need more of the proteins because your muscles they can wear out more regularly compared to a sedentary worker a sedentary worker these are the office workers okay the teachers the nurses basically it's sedentary okay so pick the quantities correctly and the other special requirements are you feeding an infant infants up to two years they they need special requirements they need more proteins okay because the, it's a period of rapid growth they will also need more of the calcium and vitamin d and phosphates for the strong bones and for the strong teeth are you an adolescent and adolescents are between the teens these are the teenagers 13 to 19 okay again it's a period of rapid growth and so they also need additional proteins they also need additional calcium vitamin d and phosphates to cater for that period of rapid growth expecting mothers the pregnant mothers they also need more protein because they are now feeding for two and the embryo inside is developing and it's growing okay so there's rapid growth there calcium vitamin d phosphate for the rapid growth of the developing baby okay and they also need a lot of iron for increased uh, production of hemoglobin for the mother as well as for the child because remember hemoglobin is needed for making the red blood cells for transporting the oxygen okay are you pregnant if you are pregnant you need the same food as that of um, an expecting mother are you lactating that is you are breastfeeding okay you need those things and for pregnant mothers please try to minimize your alcohol intake when you're pregnant try to avoid smoking and try to avoid 
taking of drugs. All these are going to be very harmful to your unborn baby. We are going to look at this topic again later on. Okay, but since we are talking about a healthy living, we, I felt I should mention this. We we'll elaborate more on how they affect the developing child inside your womb later on. Girls who are menstruating, they also need a lot of iron to replace the blood which they are losing. Okay, so foods rich in iron will also be very suitable for these ladies and a little bit of extra protein to make extra hemoglobin molecules. So for today, we'll end here. But stay tuned, we are going to continue looking at some of the other foods which provide the other nutrients. And we are also going to go into a bit of detail on some of the vitamins, their functions, as well as the deficiency effects. We we'll also look at overall malnutrition. What is malnutrition? If you are not eating right, you are going to be in trouble. Okay, so... Stay tuned. We'll meet in the next segment. Thank you.